Hey everyone, a continuing video on LXC and how we're going to administrator it. Administrator, administration of LXC, that's what I meant. Quick recap, to install a new LXC container, you just do sudo LXC, create, put in the name of the container, and then the type, template, and you could type in Ubuntu or whatever the template's name is. Cool. Next, if you do sudo ls var cache lxc, then it's showing us there is a item in here. So lxc is kind of like, let's just go ahead and cd into that location. And then we could see ls there, we could do cd lxc. Permission denied, okay. So you will want to be root for these because that's just how it likes it. And there's that focal, so we could do cd focal. What else is there in here? What's in here? Okay. So deep within our var cache logs of lsc focal, there's this directory called root fs amd64. So this is the amd architecture for our Ubuntu container that we created in the last video. As you can see, we got binaries, dev, the Etsy, home, libraries, the media, proc, run, servers, sys, user, temp, all the stuff that are in our root directory. So that's pretty cool, right? It's showing us the whole architecture of our container within this directory path, and it looks pretty much the same as our container. So really, our container inside of our host is pretty much the same as our host. Good, so now we can list all of our containers within this virtual machine. This is the only container we have so far, and if we want to see some more details about it, we can do fancy, hold on, dash dash fancy. We can see that this container is stopped and the auto start is set to zero. This is like binary bit, so you know zero is off. If it said one, then auto start would be on. And you would change this through the configuration of LXC, probably under the etc directory. But we're not going to do that in this video. You'll notice that there isn't an IPv address because it's off. It says unprivileged is false, meaning this is a privileged container. If we want to wake this up, we're just going to do LXC start name magic container. Check the status again. We are up and running. And we've got an IP address. To stop it, we're just going to do the same command, but it's going to do LXC stop. Fancy, and we'll, we're stopped. No more IP address. So let's turn it back on with start. And we're back up. And we've got the same IP address. Look at that. The IP address is probably cached in like a configuration parameter somewhere. Or... So if we go to LXC, there's another one that is LXC freeze. Now you would use freeze to, let's say the container's misbehaving or maybe it's um, eating up too many resources and you don't want to stop it. Maybe you need your CPU power somewhere else, or your RAM somewhere else, and you just need to, you don't want to stop it because if you stopped it, then it would kill a lot of the processes that are still running and kind of important. So you just want to freeze it to like idle those processes so they don't all have to, so they don't all have to start back up. It's kind of just like a pause and play button. If we hit this, then we see that the state is frozen. We still have the IP address and all the processes that are within this container that we're running did not stop. It's just on pause. So we can hit play by doing the unfreeze. 
Now it's running again. Cool. Now, what if the process is misbehaving in a way that it's actually frozen? Like, you know, you didn't freeze it, but it's actually like frozen. It's not working properly. You're trying to hit stop with this command, with the stop command, but it's not working. And it's not listening to your signal. So what you do here is you do dash K. Dash K will ruthlessly murder and assassinate this container process. And as you see, it stopped. So this is kind of like that sig kill terminate, like the signal kill terminate that we talked about in our theoretical processes videos back like 10, 12 videos ago. But so that's kind of what that is similar to. Now let's start it back up. Come on. Fancy. Okay, so we know this is the IP address. And a couple of videos ago, we talked about SSH. So if we want to administer and manage this container and work inside and out of it, we have to do SSH. We can do the username that is sitting on that SSH server, or sorry, not our container. Then we can paste in that IP address, hit enter, hit yes. And now it's asking for Ubuntu's password. This is the default username that we have on our container that we created in the last video. And you may or may not have changed the password. If you didn't, the default password is Ubuntu. We're in. Here, we can do, we can work away inside the container. You know, we can give it its own kind of things. Apt get install net tools. Um, yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Pseudo apt get install y net tools. What did I write? I was missing the pseudo. Okay. Okay, it's already installed, so I can do if config. So, what do we see about our network interfaces? We can see our IP address, the one that we're SSH'd in. What we also see is this is an Ethernet port, and we have a loopback port. But the Ethernet port, that is a physical port. But this is a container inside of a virtual machine, so this is the furthest thing from physical. But yet, this container thinks that it is a virtual but yet this container thinks that it's a physical computer. It does not know that is a container inside of a VM. It does not see its parent. It does not see its host. All it knows is that it is a physical computer, which isn't true. Pretty cute, right? All right, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Just a quick little administration of LXC containers. I hope you found some value in this video, and I'd like to thank you for watching.